Welcome to My Hometown, the program that explores clubs, organizations, businesses, and issues across Nassau and Suffolk counties and sheds light on the different towns that are making a difference. Hello and welcome to My Hometown. I'm Bill Horan, along with my co-host, Nassau Community College student, Matt Leonard, coming to you live via Zoom and being socially distant as recommended. Bill, I've started my engine and I'm revving to go. After the show, I challenge you to a race, a go-kart race, that is. I can feel the excitement. Let's explain why we're so excited by welcoming our guest, Karen Davis Thiraj, the president and co-founder of RPM Raceway, with locations in the tri-state area, including on Daniel Street and Farmingdale, just off of Route 110. On your marks, get set. Let's go, Bill. I'm ready. <laughs> Karen, welcome to my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHBC. Thank you. I am thrilled to be here with you guys t- this morning. Karen, before we start talking about the raceway, tell us, how have you survived during this last difficult year and throughout the pandemic? Whew, is that not a loaded <laughs> question for all of us, isn't it? <laughs> um, I think that the the way in which we've survived is, first of all, Uh, We did all the learning we could Um, as restrictions were, you know, changed um, as uh, rules were put in place, as there was so much difficulty in the industry um, and we were shut down for four months. We took it upon ourselves to spend time creating a new plan a, a COVID plan. And that was called race play more safely with RPM. And that was really focused on what we needed to do in all of our stores in order to ensure that our teammates and our guests could come back and race with us with confidence that we were doing everything in our power to keep them safe once they returned. And that was really our playbook. Um, And we turned it into all of the counties um, before we opened. We, We became kind of a role model in that way. And we, it included signage in the stores, cleaning regimens in the stores. It included retraining all of our teams on how to act and how to make sure that we were meeting our goals of keeping everyone safe. Um, there was a lot of protocols we went through. But I would say race play more safely is really what got us through. And then just taking advantage of all of the, uh, all of the, the funding, you know, PPP and getting very educated and becoming knowledgeable so that we could take advantage of everything to try to help us through such a such a horrific time. So you really made this a productive time, which we compliment you because, of course, we're stuck with it. We don't have much of a choice. And if you can make the business better or any operation, that's always terrific. Matt? So for someone that's never seen go-karting before, what is RPM Raceway all about? Well, the first thing I would say is that um, we're a place to come to create uh, memorable experiences for family, friends, and peers. So if you think of it that way, um, we're all about racing. There's no question. Racing is the core of who we are. I like to say we're all about authenticity, exhilaration, and safety. Um, And in creating those memories, we're creating memories for families that have uh, little ones, but only those over six years old and 48 inches can actually race in a junior cart. Uh, for teens, we race teens in an adult cart, um, but as unlicensed racers. And for adults, we race them in adult carts uh, as licensed racers. We're actually regulated by the sp- state because we're so authentic. Our carts are from Italy. They go up to 45 miles an hour. There are hairpin turns and straightaways on our uh, almost quarter mile tracks. Uh, Every Monday we put those tracks together and then you're racing actually almost a half a mile inside 120,000 square foot store in Long Island specifically. Um, So it's all about excitement and authenticity. And we want every racer to feel like a racer and there's a racer in everyone. So you don't have to be good at this. In fact, 70% of everybody who walks in the door has never done this before. And so we're also teachers and we teach you how to have fun and create memories. Karen, you just clarified for me because I really pictured this as something what we used to call, and and I don't mean this as an insult, but bumper cars. 
Yeah. And I thought it was just a little fun type go around twice or something like this. 45 miles an hour, that's moving. And that might be faster than we typically drive down local highways, at least, if, if not the main roads. But um, that, that's moving quickly. So if someone comes in now, um, do they get set up in a race? Like if I was just to walk in, would you say the next race begins at 3 p.m. and uh, four other people would be all uh, one against the other? Is that how it works? Um, that is kind of. That's one way. And I'll explain both ways. But let me also first say. Our carts go up to 45 miles an hour. However, you're racing a European racetrack. It's not an oval. It's a European, which means there's hairpin turns and straightaways. So you can't possibly go 45 miles an hour when you're racing uh, uh, that kind of track. Um, But I will tell you, no one ever complains you're going as fast as you want to go. And the other thing you should know is that the junior, tr- the junior cards don't go as fast as the adult cards, but it's the exact same experience, except in a smaller frame and going slower. The non-licensed drivers race one speed below licensed drivers. So, yes, it's about competency. But to answer your question, there's two ways to race with us. You can either come in and get in the queue, just as you said. And when you do that, you're getting in a queue that depending on if there's a lot of other people that got there before you, you might have to wait. You'll um, always have to wait on the weekends. So there's other things to do in our building, which we can talk about as well. But uh, for racing specifically, you get in the queue. We race between eight and 10 racers in a race. And they're racing for fastest lap. So you're actually racing against yourself to some extent. So you might have never raced before. You might, you know, after four or five or six laps, get kind of get the hang of it. And you might have a fast lap that puts you on the scoreboard more appropriately than you thought you might come in because it's really about the lap. So that's the first way to race with us is come in, get in the queue and race uh, in a race based on, oh, uh, based on eight people in each race. The other way to race is if you have eight people, seven or eight people, and you want to come in and race what we call the RPM raceway, two, three, or 4,000, that's the most authentic way. Uh, 2,000 means two races, 3,000, three races, 4,000, four races. But the first race is the practice race. In the case of the 2,000, it's actually, actually both the practice and the qualifier. And you're racing for fastest lap. And you're racing against people that you've come there with to race with. Second race or third race, depending, is a practice. And then the the final race is what we call the main event. And we do exactly as they do in pro racing. We put you on the track based on your qualifier in position. So the fastest lap racer is at the front. The slowest lap racer is at the end. The flags come down. And they're racing for fastest race. And that is truly exactly how pro racing happens. And then uh, when we have a winner, we love to salute them at the winner's circle. They get medals or trophies or depending on what they've organized, if it's a group that's really gone all out um, in order to um, to appreciate the ceremony of uh of, of gold, silver, bronze. Now, Karen, this, this is really sounding fun. Now you're getting me more and more interested in this. Uh, <laughs> but if I came in, like, what type of time frame should I allow if I was to walk in at 12 noon someday and forgetting that there might be a wait? Of course, that, that's always going to have to be adjusted. But uh, would a typical session, if I came over, be 20 minutes, two hours? How does that work? Yeah, I would always give yourself a couple hours. No one, or I should say no one, very few people race once because if you've never done this before, you, 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 it's going to take five, six, seven laps, as I said, just to get used to it. Um, our laps are anywhere between, you know, depending on if we're on, a, um, on one full uh, track or two tracks, but um, you're racing 15 laps. It's a lot of racing. And so you want to get out of, and these are electric carts. There's no fumes, no emissions, no gas. They're clean, they're green, and they're safe. 
So after you've raced, you're going to get out of your car. You're going to want to hydrate, get something to drink, talk about your race. And then we will have already put you back in the queue to race again. So you're not going to race back to back. Um, so I would always give yourself at least a couple hours because you're going to want to race two races. I, I think I see Matt putting on a racing helmet right now. I better <laughs> turn it back over to him because he's got some more questions for you. <laughs> you are listening to my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Matt Leonard, along with Bill Horan. And today we are talking about a unique local business that offers go-karting and a whole lot more with our guest, Karen Davis Farage the president and co-founder of RPM Raceway, with locations throughout the tri-state area, including on Daniel Street in Farmingdale, which is just off of Route 110. Now, if someone like me or Bill, who is not the best at go-karting, or Bill, I've never seen you drive, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure how that would go. <laughs> the um, old state man follows me when I'm driving. I'll just tell you that, and you can figure it out. <laughs> are, are there lessons to be a better racer? Uh, yes, there are, there are lessons because we're about safety. So um, everybody has to watch a safety video. We have produced a safety video. Um, and that's all about the rules of racing. And it's also about how to run, the, how to operate the cart and whatnot. Um, and, then, and we're in the pit with you when you're going through that. So if anybody has any questions about the video, our pit team is there to support you. Then they give you a pit briefing and they tell you some of the kind of ins and outs. For example, I raced yesterday with my team in Syracuse. We have a, we have a track in Syracuse. And um, I was very proud of myself. I never hit the brake once in the whole race. Now, I didn't come in first by any means. My team was much better than me. You know, they race. We give everyone who works for us gets three free races a week because we want our team members to be great racers so they can be great teachers. So yes, um, I, I didn't hit the brake and, and there's a lot of strategy around racing and yes, we do teach you that. This sounds like somebody, the, the more you're talking about it and I'm usually not someone who jumps into things, but it really does sound like fun. Um, Karen, how about uh, leagues? Are there, like we think of a bowling league, and I know golfers have uh, different groups that set up their own um, internal weekly meetings. Do you have things like that? Uh, yes. We, um, you know, with COVID, obviously, everything came to a halt. I think you'll, you will absolutely see summer leagues start in Long Island. Um, so look for that. We also have special pricing so that people can come back and back and back because that's really our intention. You get hooked. I mean, um, it's such an exhilarating experience, and it's our job to make it so for you um, that we want our our um, guests, our racers, to come back and back and back. So we have a a pricing schematic which is called a membership. It's a one time fee a year, and you pay that, and that gets you for for uh, uh, sixty dollars. That gets you about a, about one hundred and twenty dollars worth of value. And it gives you two free races, your first visit, and a free race, your next visit, and then discounts on everything else in the building from, you know, uh, we have mini bowling in Long Island. We have a simulator in Long Island. Um, we have virtual reality in Long Island. Um, so all those other things you get a discount on. And then all of your races throughout the year are highly discounted. And if you buy bundles, you can get them down to like $14 a race. So we encourage both um, having experiences outside of the normal come in for just arrive and drive, as we call that getting in the queue, as well as um, uh, leagues and being a member. Now, you know, the most important thing for high quality athletes like Matt and myself, and uh, I, I don't want to impinge Matt because I'm, I'm the one who's the worst of the worst, but we don't really care about the sport. We want a trophy. So when people come in our house, they say, oh, how did you win that trophy? And then we give them an hour's uh, explanation. Do you get trophies? Absolutely. Oh, do you hear that, Matt? Oh, we're in. We're in. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm coming there right now, Bill. I can see that. I see you getting all ready, getting that helmet fixed. You, <laughs> your turn. I, I've, I'm 
getting ready while we were talking here. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, you mentioned there's a lot of other things to do at RPM. Which one would you say is your favorite about, uh, besides the racing of, out of all the other activities? I think the virtual reality is so cool. Um, the bowling is, is, um, uh, is small ball bowling. So it's really fun for the family and everybody can do it. And it just takes less, you know, you don't have to have special shoes and all those good things. But um, the virtual reality in this day and age is so it, it's so real and it's going on a whole experience. And our virtual reality uh, comes from a German company who's really perfected the experience. And, you know, virtual reality is still evolving. But this company has done an unbelievable job and there's different games you can play and we have up to four players in every game. So if you come with, you know, a group, you can four at a time can play virtual, can play against each other. And, uh, you know, it, it immerses you in another world and it's very, very cool. Karen, tell us how this, this is a family owned business, right? Yeah. Can you give us a little bit of the background, how this came about? Because it really sounds like a great idea and a great way to get people out when we're looking to do something literally in our own neighborhoods. Absolutely. Um, Well, I was in the software industry for uh, 35 years, and my husband was a um, contractor. And we were about to send our first of three kids uh, off to college, and he was a... um, uh, and and about, and it was 08 and the uh, recession had hit and uh, fairly far into the recession, uh, the company I was with laid off a number of executives and I was one of them. His business came to a stop because nobody was building anything during the recession. Um, I mean, they were building big buildings, but he he's um, a, a storefront and more commercial and also high, high end residential and nobody was spending a cent in that market. Um, so we were in a really bad place. Uh, he has an antique Porsche uh, that he's had for many years. And he had always said, as each of our three kids goes away to college, I want to do like a three or four day bonding trip. He and our son, our son was on his way to USC in Los Angeles. So they decided to take the Porsche cross country with the goal of doing the most exciting things in the most beautiful places in America. So for two weeks, they traversed the United States, uh, jumped out of planes, rafted down wild rivers, shot rifles in meadows, parasailed over lakes. And when they got to LA, the last thing they did together before my husband took our son to USC to his dorm was go indoor electric karting. And our son got out of his card and said, Uh, Mom and dad, this is what you should do next. You should bring this to New York. (laughs) That's really a cool story because how how a fun trip turned into a business operation. And it it really sounds like it's a a fun evening out for for anybody, whether you're jumping in the cars, doing the bowling or the virtual reality part. uh, I, I think we'd all enjoy it. Absolutely. I, you know, there are very few people that don't. And the, the great thing is that you can come together as a group. So, Um, we're just starting to see uh, corporate events, believe it or not, come back. So we're a great um, venue to celebrate a kid's birthday party. And we do back-to-back-to-back birthday kids' birthday parties every weekend. Um, And can you imagine a 10-year-old or a 12-year-old or an 8-year-old child taking eight of their best friends to do an activity that no one's ever done before and it's indoor electric karting, like that kid is on cloud nine and we really salute that, that, that racer that, that, that hosts the party. And then we provide goodie bags and everything is thematic. And, you know, we do our best to really immerse everyone in the experience. Um, And then we do a huge amount of uh, adult parties and bachelor and bachelorette parties and, Gosh, we've had reading groups give up reading that week and come to RPM Raceway instead. So, um, you know, we, we've hosted an 80th birthday party. We've hosted retirement parties. I mean, literally thousands and thousands of parties over the years. 
And I then think this might be a great way with most of us working virtual reality now, you know, yes. and, and uh, Zoom meetings that businesses get a chance to actually meet the person you're working with, have some fun and being indoors. It's not like a golf or tennis outing where you can get rained out or, you know, the weather's a little adverse or windy and you're a little uncomfortable for the day or maybe you don't play and want to be embarrassed. So I, I think you really uh, you got a lot going for you. And your son is probably a business consultant now at USC after he's done such a great job with you. Actually, he, he graduated from their business school, and we went on to um, send uh, two more. Our two girls also went to USC, so we're big Trojan fans. But, um, yes, he's put it to work, and he's been, um, uh, oh, my gosh, invaluable to the company. You know, he's got the mind and the breath of, of what young people want, and he's – um, he's made some very significant changes. We've, we're, we're, all of our systems are about um, uh, knowing who our customers are and looking at our data and making sure that we're, you know, creating the right promotions and that we're doing outreach to the right segments and how we advertise. And everything is based on the systems that he brought in and the data we now have to use in order to run a better business. You are listening to My Hometown on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Matt Leonard. I'm along with Bill Horan. And today we are talking about a unique local business that offers go-karting and a whole lot more with our guest, Karen Davis Farage, the president and co-founder of RPM Raceway with locations throughout the tri-state area, including on Daniel Street in Farmingdale, which is just off of Route 110. My next question is kind of interesting. When you walk into your business, what do you see that others might miss? Oh, boy. I normally see what others exactly don't see. That is if there's a piece of paper on the floor, if the (laughs) toilet's not clean, if there's dust. you well, know, we don't, really don't, don't tell us about any of that. Tell us the positives. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, it, but as an owner, you know, you do see things. Um, we're always striving to we, we want it to be clean. I mean, you say racing and people think, oh, gosh, it must be smelly and dirty and this and that. And it's the contrary of that, especially because it's electric. But we want people to feel like, you know, they can eat off the floors at RPM Raceway. So that's probably one of the things. Um I, I think that we're we have so much to do that I see all of those different activities. And so making sure that people understand that there is so much to do there is probably something that I'm always aware of. How do we educate them better on all the different activities, attractions that there are to do in the building that they might not see otherwise? Karen, how about since the pandemic? Was there changes that in every business has things, you know, with the distance, et cetera? Were there actual uh, changes that you had to make in order to accommodate? Uh, Huge. First of all, we had many of our attractions actually closed. And there was actually quite a bit of uh, challenge with the state of New York um, and the governor's office versus the local authorities as to what could and could not be open. So we really worked hard with all of the constituencies to make sure that we were doing all the right things. But safely spacing all of our games, coming up with cleaning protocols. So we created the RPM Raceway Clean Team, and they walk around with a yellow vest on, and in the back it says RPM Clean Team. Um, And they're cleaning, like, literally behind everyone, Um, having sanitation stations throughout the building. And we were buying, like, 20 or 30 sanitation stations per store, Um, to make sure that we were um, providing access to everyone, keeping their hands clean after touching something. Um, We we are committed to cleaning every cart and every helmet after every race. So the whole protocol for where things went after you raced had to change. And many, many more. We had um, plexiglass up. So, I mean, forevermore, we'll probably have the plexiglass up. So we had to change how we shared all of the information, uh, greeting a new guest. Um, And we couldn't really do it behind the register anymore because of the plexiglass. And now we have a greeter that greets everyone when they walk in the door and we and we share all of there is all that there is to know with them. 
before they register. So uh, registering online, uh, going on your phone and using our QR code to register on your own phone. I've probably named, I don't know, 10 or 12, 15 different things right there that we've done in order to meet the standard and make sure that our guests feel confident and be safe. We noticed that during the pandemic, RPM Raceway hosted some events where profits are donated to organizations such as Salvation Army, NAACP, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's New Jersey, among others. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that and what I hear is called the RPM Cares Program? Yeah, that's um, probably the closest thing to, uh, to, to what motivates me every day, quite honestly, after being in the corporate world for 35 years. Um, the last couple of years of being in corporate in the technology industry, there was much more focus on give back. And I was part of that. And so when we started the company, um, of course, I got to create the core values since I was the I was the founder. And one of those core values is cars or cares. It's a play on cares, obviously. The C stands for cancer, A for Alzheimer's, R for recovery. And the S is the S, the little S in those in need. And we have those four buckets very purposely. I lost my mom to lung cancer and everyone in our family, um, we've had a lot of, of cancer. And then both my mom and my husband's mom um, had early Alzheimer's. So we both have lived through losing our parents to a horrendous disease um, that robs them of um, their memories. And so, uh, and then the recovery and those in need every there's always a time when somebody is recovering from something and somebody is in need. And what we did with cars is we said, we're going to give to every 501 C that asks. So we're not going to have a ceiling like most companies do where, you know, once you reach $2,000 in give back, that's it for the year. So we have a never, we have a never say no policy. Karen, if someone wants to learn more about your business or get in touch with you, how do they do so? Uh, They go to rpmraceway.com. Easy enough to remember, and it's right here on Long Island in Farmingdale. If anyone wants to take part, and I know you're going to see me there and Matt with our helmets because we're probably going to crash a few times, but we'll (laughs) definitely put the helmets on. We want to thank you today, Karen davis Farage, the president and co-founder of RPM Raceway located on Daniel Street in Farmingdale, right off Route 110. Karen, good luck to you. Thank you. Come race soon, and we're hiring. Oh, if you're hiring, what kind of positions are you looking for? Well, we have all kinds of positions, uh, mainly around guest service and on the track. We do all the training ourselves. We start above uh, minimum wage, and there's lots of upward mobility, and we love to hire students, uh, and we fit their availability into their work hours. We commit to 15 plus hours and uh, they want the hours. We'll give them to them. So So this is a college radio station. So we love to hear that. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) I'm Bill Horan. I'm here with Matt Leonard. We thank you for listening to this week's special edition of my hometown. We'd like to get your feedback on my hometown. Send your comments to WHPC at ncc.edu. Nassau community college where success starts and continues. Till next time, this is Bill St. James. And remember, there's no town like your hometown.